Here I've got a nice geometry problem from the 1993 Nordic math contest. So we want to assume that we have a hexagon with two sides of length one, two sides of length two, and two sides of length three that is inscribed in a circle of radius r, where r is unknown. And then our final goal is to find a cubic polynomial equation satisfied by r. Before we really dive all the way into this problem, I first want to notice that given the two side lengths 1, 2, and 3, there are only so many possible configurations of this hexagon. So in order to figure out all the different configurations of hexagons with these side lengths, let's get a couple of hexagons on the board that we can play around with. Okay, so I've drawn three hexagons on the board, and now I'm gonna lay them out so each of them have two sides of length one, two sides of length two, and two sides of length three. And I think all we'll really need is three cases here, up to symmetries of rotations and reflections. So we could start with our first hexagon, which has a side length one here, a side length one here, two here, two here, and three here, and three here. I want to point out that obviously I'm not doing this to scale at the moment. This is just a brief sketch up to look at the configuration of our sides. And then next we have a side length of one here, a side length of one here, and then maybe a two here, a three here, a two here, and a three here. So that would be another possibility. So let's look at what we've got here. This is if each of the like sides are next to each other. So the side with length one is next to the side with length one, two is next to two, and three is next to three. So that represents one of the possible configurations is what if only one of the like side lengths are next to each other? So in this case, it would be one, although there'd be a similar case if the side lengths of length two were next to each other or three. So here we've got one is next to one, and then it alternates two, three, two, three. I guess another possibility would be what if one and one were next to each other? and then two and two were next to each other, and then three and three were opposite each other. And then finally, we could have a last case, which is when none of the side lengths of like type are next to each other. So in this case, we would have something like one, two, three, one, two, three. So in other words, they are all opposite each other. And up to rotations and reflections, these are all of the possible configurations of these types of side lengths within a hexagon. And maybe the most important part of this entire problem is to notice that all of these configurations allow us to draw a diagonal from opposite vertices of this hexagon that splits it into two congruent quadrilaterals. And so those quadrilaterals will have side length one, two, three, and then the shared diagonal. So in this case, we can connect this vertex with this vertex, and then we've got a quadrilateral over here with side length one, two, three, and one over here with side length one, two, three. Then let's see what we could do here. Well, we could maybe connect this vertex with this vertex, and we've got the same thing happening. Here, we could connect this vertex with this vertex, and we have the same thing happening. Quadrilateral side length one, two, three, and then a shared diagonal. And then it's not quite the same in this first case, but let's notice that three plus three is six, and two plus two plus one plus one is also six. So if we connect these two vertices here, we haven't separated it into two quadrilaterals, but we've separated it into line segments that have the same sum. Okay, so that really points to the fact that these bottom pictures should be one sort of source of exploration, and this top picture should be another source of exploration. And in fact, to maybe serve as a representative for this bottom three cases, let's look at this one right here. All the rest of them will be the same. And so let's maybe get a picture on the board where we have this type of hexagon inscribed in a circle. Now we're ready to look at our first case. 
And that first case, as we discussed on the last board, was when the hexagon decomposes into two congruent quadrilaterals that is based off cutting by a diagonal of the hexagon. And so in this case, if we cut with the diagonal given by AD, so that line right there, then we've got congruent quadrilaterals on either side. So this has side length one, two, three, and then this line right here, and then this has side length one, two, three, and then whatever the length of this line right here is. Another thing, since this is all inscribed in a circle, we actually know the length of this line because this is a diameter of the circle. So I think that's pretty clear from construction. So that means we know that the length of this is 2r. But now if we focus only on only half of the picture, namely the quadrilateral A, B, C, D, that's a so-called cyclic quadrilateral. So let's maybe put that down here as an observation. So A, B, C, D is a cyclic quadrilateral. And that's actually really good news because there's a powerful theorem called Ptolemy's theorem that will allow us to express a relation between the length of all of these sides of the quadrilateral along with the diagonals. So let's maybe recall that real quick. So if we've got a cyclic quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, then we know that side length A, C times side length B, D, I guess I should say that is diagonal length A, C and diagonal length B, D is the same thing as side length A, B times side length C, D plus side length A, D times side length B, C. So I won't provide a proof of that here, but it's pretty easy to find a proof on YouTube if you're psyched. Okay, so now let's put in the known measurements here and see what we still need to figure out. So let's notice that A, C is unknown and B, D is also unknown. So I'll just leave those as is. But A, B, C, D, A, D, and B, C are all known. Notice that A, B is three, C, D is one. So we have this is three times one or just three. And then A, D is two R and B, C is two. So that means we have this is plus four R. Okay, now we just have to come to grips with what A, C, and B, D are. So let's maybe get those sketched into our picture so we can get an idea of what's going on here. So there's our line segment A, C, which is a diagonal, and there's our line segment B, D, which is also diagonal. Now we're gonna use an important result from geometry. So since A, D is a diameter, and this angle ABD kind of eats this diagonal, we know that this angle right here is right. So in other words, angle ABD is 90 degrees. Then we can do the same thing regarding angle ACD because it eats the diagonal here. So there, that's a right angle as well. So this is equal to the angle measure ACD as well. But that's really good news because that means we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the measure of AC and BD. And so let's do that. So applying the Pythagorean theorem to triangle ACD will give us AC squared plus one squared equals four R squared, right? Because we've got this length right here, this length right here, and then the hypotenuse, which is the diameter. Then furthermore, applying the Pythagorean theorem to triangle ABD will give us, let's see, BD squared plus 9 squared equals 4R squared. But now we can use those equations to solve for the unknown side lengths. So let's see, that'll give us AC is equal to 4R squared minus 1 square root. And then BD is equal to the square root of 4R squared minus 9. Okay, so now let's maybe take these values of AC and BD, 
and put them into this equation that we started the board with. So far, we've used geometric arguments to build an algebraic equation for the radius of our circle that our hexagon is inscribed within. So it's this equation. So we've got the square root of 4r squared minus 1 times the square root of 4r squared minus 9 equals 4r plus 3. And now all we really have to do is multiply these things out, probably square both sides to get rid of the square root and reduce this to a cubic polynomial as that was our goal. So squaring both sides will give us 4r squared minus 1 times 4r squared minus 9 equals 4r plus 3 quantity squared. So now multiplying all of this out will give us 16r to the fourth, and then minus, let's see, 40r squared plus 9 equals 16r squared plus 24r plus 9. Then we can see that the constant terms cancel and that leaves us with a quartic polynomial with no constant term, which is good news because that can be reduced to a cubic polynomial equation. So let's do that. So this will give us 16r to the fourth minus 56r squared minus 24r equals zero. We can divide by r because we know our radius is non-zero and maybe also divide by eight and that will give us 2r cubed minus 7r minus 3 equals 0. And this cubic polynomial is exactly what we were asked to find. But we've only done it in one case, and that's when this hexagon composes into congruent quadrilaterals. So let's maybe get rid of this, and then we'll sketch a start for the final case, which involved that other decomposition of the hexagon. So the one outstanding case is what I've called case two, which is if the side lengths of equal side are all next to each other. So in other words, we've got one, one, three, three, and two, two. In this case, I think there's like a little bit of a cop-out trick, but what you wanna do is make a diagonal from A to D and notice that will definitely not be a diameter because these lengths on either side are different. But what we can do is cut the whole picture right here. So cut the circle right here, cut the circle right here, perform a reflection. And we've changed this hexagon, which is inscribed in the, into the circle to a hexagon that's like of the other type inscribed in the same circle. And then we can apply case one. So that's all I'm gonna do with this case because it's really just a transformation into case one. And that's a good place to stop.